This is the kissing gate of St Kyneburgers Church here in the village of Caster in Cambridgeshire. And it's one of the most beautiful medieval churches in England. And yet it's what's under this church's graveyard that's got our archaeologists very excited because beneath my feet could be the remains of a mysterious Roman building. But it's not just one Roman building by itself. Over there in the school playing field, across there in the rectory. In fact, everywhere I look, archaeologists have found impressive Roman structures. This could add up to be something very special. Looks like it's going to be a hectic three days. That is, if I can never get down again. Caster is five miles west of Peterborough in Cambridgeshire. Nearly 2,000 years ago, it was right next to the important Roman town of Dura Brevi and less than a mile from Ermine Street, a major Roman road that's still visible from the air today. And over the last 400 years, antiquarians, archaeologists and even grave diggers have been discovering nuggets of Castor's intriguing past. Ben, you've been here before, haven't you? You're an old friend of William and his grave diggers. Yes, I used to look after the archaeology in this area, so yes, I know William well. <laughs> Why? Why did you keep coming here? Well, every time a grave was dug, a mass of Roman material would come out. So, you know, it, it was obviously of interest and something that I ought to be concerned about. This kind of stuff? Absolutely. I'm, I'm just an enthusiastic amateur, but even I can recognise distinctive Roman material like this. Tegula, a piece of Roman tile that's ridge. It's a pili, Roman's hippocorps bricks. What's the stuff you got here? Well, um, about a couple of years ago, the grave diggers called me to say that they thought they'd gone through a Roman building in digging the grave. Now, obviously, I wanted to have a look, and they actually lowered me into the grave, which was, which was pretty unnerving and peculiar. But in the base of the grave, um, it was obvious that they had, in fact, got something like a Roman floor and I could just make out this sort of thin band of, of Roman cement, and I would dearly love to know what this was part of. Are you happy about us digging in your graveyard? Absolutely. It, it doesn't seem quite right. No, this area has not been dug in before. There are no bodies buried here. Well, this, this strip along Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Yeah. Artists also surveyed the whole village and published this map in 1828. It claims to show the location of lots of Roman buildings in and around the churchyard. But antiquarians, as we know, can be a bit unreliable. So we're going to test just how much of what artist says is here can actually be found on the ground. There's obviously a lot of commonality between what he mapped and what's still here. What are you doing, guys? Well, what we're trying to do is look at, first of all, what artists mapped in the early 19th century. And we've overlaid them against the, the modern base map so we can get some idea of where these features were. There are enough common features in there to be able to roughly work out where his buildings were and their orientation and so on. Roman buildings. Roman buildings, yeah. that's right. Now the problem comes when you add to that this overlay, which is where various bits of what he found have been re-excavated over the years, these bits in, in yellow. Trying to match things together, but well, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just looking at this, I mean, it seems to be more, well, you match at one side, the other side's out. You try and match up this side, and this side's all out. So basically, well, it just doesn't match. Mm. <laughs> and this is pretty critical to sort out the orientation and alignment of these walls to understand what's here. Mm. So what are we going to do, Stu? Well, there's only one way to really do that, and that's almost kind of throw away some of this stuff. And draw a new map. Exactly. Create our own map. So you two have got quite a big job, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Back outside, it's now raining cats and dogs on our archaeologists in Trench One. <laughs> Thank you so much. But despite the weather and the geophys results, this trench is turning into something of a gold mine. We got some finds for. We're getting loads of finds out already. This is just a selection. There's this stuff, which is kind of Saxo-Norman, dates the 11th, early 12th century, around about the time the church was built. So they were quite possibly robbing out the Roman buildings for stone to build the church. And we've got our first bit of early Middle Saxon handmade pottery, five, six, seven centuries, something like that. What about this chunky stuff here? Well, we've got Roman as well. There's some bits of Roman colour-coated pottery, which is late third, fourth. Bit of a mosaic tessera as well, possibly. 
Cracking selection of finds already. It looks like there's something coming out of the trench, Phil. Yeah, well, this is the crucial thing, Tony. As Paul says, we are beginning to get Saxon pottery. These are the first levels that we're actually coming down onto. They could include Saxon buildings here. This is really rather extraordinary for us. We always have a problem finding Saxon on time team. To find it, great, but then to find it on the site where we're looking for Roman is a little bit more difficult. What do we find next? Probably snow. Thank you.